This is Sean Taylor from Biorad uh, Canada. I'm a field application specialist with the company and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the dual flow software package. So dual flow software is the package that runs our chromatography systems, our, our high-end pump based systems with uh, two sapphire piston heads for pump A and B to give you uh, very precise flow rate control um, all the way up to 3500 PSI if you're working with our, with our basic system. So um, when you open the software, you open into our manual screen. And the manual screen looks like this. So we have the pump controls here, fraction collector controls here, detector controls here, and if you have an external pump, which, which is useful actually for pumping, uh, for filling up our uh, dyno loop, um, or for pumping sample directly onto uh, a column, you can use the external gradient pump. So all of these can be connected to the instrument with a, with a variety of different valving configurations as well. And the valves are here. There's a variety of valves you can purchase. Uh, the 9-8 valve, uh, the system comes standard with an injection valve. This is our ABR 7-3. 5-4 valves, which are very nice for doing automated uh, cleanup of the system at the end of a run. And then we have a diverter valve as well, which you can purchase. So you can hook up a, a number of different flavors of valves to the system to do a variety of different separations. So when you open the system, this is your, your basically what you would be using is these pump controls to initially purge the system and so on. Very straightforward to use. You can set the flow rate. Let's say four mils per minute. Hit enter. You can do uh, set uh, the um, the percent of A or B. So typically, we recommend that A would be your low salt buffer or your running buffer if you're using a gel filtration column, and B would be the the elution buffer or the high salt buffer if you're doing an exchange. If you're doing a hydrophobic interaction, obviously it's the exact opposite. But when you set a percent of one, the other goes uh, to the opposing percent so that the two of them calculate up to 100%. Um, obviously, you would want to set the high pressure limit for your column, and this is where you set it here, so 1,600 PSI, whatever the high pressure limit is, and the low pressure limit that you'd like to go down to um, for, the, for the system. Typically, I set this around 10. And then you can click Start, and the system will start pumping liquid according to the percent of A and B and so on. Now, of course, prior to starting to pump liquid through the system, you would, would have wanted to purge the liquid lines, and that I can uh, demonstrate in a different video. I just wanted to show you the software for now. So we can purge the system. You can, if you decide that you want to pump, let's say, 100% of A through the system, you need, while it's running, you need to click Set, and then it will go to 100% of A. Same thing if, if you're running on the fly and you want to change the, the, these percentages. Otherwise, you can click Stop, then go to, let's say, 100% of B, and then click Start, and it will now be at 100% of B. So it depends. If you're running on the fly, you can change things while it's running, but you have to click Set to make sure it's changed. Okay. So you can see here we have a chromatogram, okay, which, which is running online. You can resize the chromatogram to make it bigger, but if you do that, you're going to hide your valve. So just remember that. You just click Resize, and we can see the chromatogram here. So that's pretty easy to uh, to look at. Okay, and then we can watch the chromatogram. Uh, we can look at the UV trace, which is in uh, blue here. So that's our UV trace. We can look at conductivity, which is on the other side here. Conductivity. Or we can look at uh, other settings as well. So to, to change the dynamic of the graph, you can click on Settings up here. And we can, we can show different um, aspects of our chromatogram as visible or not visible. So I can show the UV, I can show conductivity, or I can show different quad tech settings as well. If you have a quad tech detector, you're allowed, you, can, you can actually visualize four simultaneous wavelengths, either in the UV or in the visible range. So I could decide to say I want to see quad tech um, to 280 nanometers. I want to make that visible. And then you can set the uh, the, the uh, max and min positions. 
and the amount of time that you want to see, 10 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever you would wish for the x-axis. Click OK. And now I can I can see the quad tech at 280, which is the green one. Okay, so I can see different aspects of my chromatogram as I wish. The percent B shows me where I'm at. So you can see that the black part, black line here, which is which is visible, percent B is at 50 percent, and I'm I'm going up to that percentage by the conductivity. This is just a simulation uh, mode in the software, so it's showing a gradient. In, in, in effect, it would go up pretty quickly to this and then follow along, but that's what I'm looking at here. And I can change the scales of all of these by running along here so I can see the scaling. Okay? So that's how you're able to control the system manually. Now, if, we, if you're doing a, an actual method, <coughs> you go into the browser screen. Okay, and in the browser screen, you can set up, this is the, the main database of the software, so you can set up users. So you start off in the user menu here, you can click on new user, and now I can type in a name. And now I have a new user which I named day, and now I have a project for day. So you click on project, if you double click, you can call this whatever you want, you know. Protein pure. You can type in the description if you wish. And now I can click new again. Now I'm in this project and I can enter a new method. Click on method. I can type a name for this method. Let's say anion. And now you click on use method templates. We have a whole bunch of pre-programmed methods that are already in the system that you can use. So we have affinity, chromatofocusing, hydrophobic interaction, hydroxyapatite. That's a that's an interesting one, which uh, actually purifies proteins through a combination of ionic interaction and specific complexation between uh, carboxylic acids and the hydroxyapatite um, calcium sites. So it's it's a <coughs> it's an interesting kind of a purification that you can do here with uh, with this one. So. Um, hydroxyapatite is a nice one. Ion exchange and gel filtration. I can't think actually of another common application that you would use to purify proteins other than these ones. So click on the one you're interested in. Let's say it's ion exchange. I'm going to just focus on the auto inject, which is which is our auto inject valve, which allows you to inject proteins into a sample loop of various sizes, you know, from 50 microliters all the way up to 5 mL, and you can make your own to go even higher than that if you wish. So auto inject, and you click OK. You have um, it describes the method as you see here. Gives you a method description, sample uh, column and sample type, devices that are needed, and so on. If you want to view the method template, it'll show you the actual setup of the method, so you can see how things are going to be set up with this method, and the picture, the flow of the, di the flow chart of the diagram, the method description, and so on and then you click OK. And now we have a pre-programmed method ready for us to edit. So we start with each step, okay? And I typically set up the collection fraction size at the end because I want to set up my method first. So double click on the first step, and this would be our equilibration step where we're running just buffer A through the system. Let's say we want to run three mils of buffer A at a flow rate of, let's say, <coughs> four mils per minute. Click OK. Now we're going to zero the baseline. So we zero the baseline. Then we go to the load inject, and we tell it how much sample we want to use. So I'm going I'm to use the static loop, although we do have other loop options, the dynamic loop for 25 to, to 90 mils injection, or direct inject, which would be from the pump. So static loop, we're going to run our running buffer through the system. Let's say we're going to run one mil of our buffer at a flow rate of, let's say, four mils per minute. Great. So we've injected the sample. Now the sample's on the column. So the next step is to wash off whatever sample doesn't bind to our anion exchange column. I typically recommend about six column volumes of washing. So if you're running a one mil column, you're going to run again 100% a day for six mils, let's say, at a flow rate of four mils per minute. Then we're going to do a linear gradient. Right? We're going to loop 
start protein off the column. So double click on linear gradient. I'm going to go from A to B. I typically recommend going from 100% of A to make up B so that you so that it'll elude at about 50% of B. Let's say uh, let's say one molar NaCl solution with TRIS. So we're going to elude up to 500 uh, millimolar. And then this would be the length of your gradient. How, over how many mils do you want to go from 100% of A to 50% of B? So let's say 12 mils as a starting point, 4 mils per minute. And then we're going to, once we've done our salt gradient, we're going to jack the system up to 100% of B to, to really get off any residual protein that's left on the column. I usually do three or four column volumes of this. So if it's a one mil column, three mils. And finally, once we've done that step, now we're going to re-equilibrate the column back in 100% of A. So back to A, let's say for seven column volumes to really wash off the, uh, the salt, four mils per minute. And the final step, which isn't in the pre-programmed protocols, would really be to turn off the UV. So to turn off your, your, uh, your lamp, so you can click on these buttons here to add steps. So lamp off, and there we go. Now our lamp is off. So we're all set to go. We're ready to run our, our protocol. Now we can go into the collect fractions, double click there, and you can see we have a variety of options we can use for collecting fractions. We can collect all the fractions, so let's say one mil fractions, okay, from beginning to end. Or we can do collection windows, which is pretty nice. What we can do is we can set up different windows of collection in our protocols. So we can say, you know, if I'm just equilibrating the system up to 3 mLs, I haven't even injected my, my sample yet once I get to the 3 mL stage. I can say, well, let's start collecting at 3 mLs just when we start inject, uh, injecting our sample to catch everything that's going to come off the column. And by the time we've done our high salt, 100% of of, um, of B, we're at 25 mils. Okay, by the end of this step here, the 100% of B step, we're at 25 mils. So let's say we want because everything's going to be off the column at that stage anyway. Now we want to do one mil fraction so we can save this window. And we can say finish adding. You can add in multiple collection windows if you wish. So I can set up different collection windows. Finish adding, and we're good to go. And now we're ready to run our method. Click run. Call method name, click OK, and start. And you are running a method. And it's as simple as that to set up the software for the Duo Flow program.